the 2001 edition of the Maryland Terrapins ready to take the field at Bird Stadium for the first time under Ralph Friedgen. Welcome back as we're live, joined by former UCLA quarterback David Norrie. Let's take North Carolina, David. They go down to Oklahoma, fall behind 38-7, but somehow they came out of that game with some confidence. Yeah, they were awfully tight starting off that game. They absolutely self-destructed in the first quarter, but in the final three quarters, they outplayed Oklahoma. They had a chance to win that game in the fourth quarter. And I think John Bunning learned two things about his team in that football game. Number one, he's got a big-time defense. And number two, they can play with anybody in the country. If you know Ralph Friedgen at Georgia Tech, you know he's a great offensive coach. But you need a great quarterback to run it. Does he have a good one? I think he does. This is the type of quarterback that Ralph Friedgen loves. Sean Hill, he reminds me a lot of George Godsey, the quarterback he had at Georgia Tech. Hits a lot of balls, doesn't have a big arm but he's very accurate, can make all the throws. The big question mark, can Sean Hill get protection up front against his talented front four of North Carolina? We're watching another senior quarterback who's starting. Ronald Curry didn't play well at OU. How well will he play today? We kick it off from the ACC in two minutes. Back with you in College Park. Very nice day. The humidity broke with some thunderstorms late last night. As you see, these teams quite familiar with each other. Last year, North Carolina, a 13-10 victory over Maryland. That is Bruce Perry, the sophomore tailback from Philadelphia, set to receive the kickoff. North Carolina won the toss, deferred the option to the second half. So senior Chris Bender, who is kicking off as Jeff Reed continues to battle an ankle injury. Bender boots it. And the Ralph Friedgen here at Maryland is underway. Here is Perry. Got a nice block and moves out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Solid return to start the season. Clarence Gaddy made the tackle along with Brian Smouse for North Carolina. So here comes Sean Hill, senior quarterback, good size at 6'3", 221. David, a junior college transfer who picked up his play at the end of last season. Yeah, he started and closed the season as a starter last year for Maryland and has a real gift for using his feet. And I think Ralph Friedgen's going to use him some today with the option. We'll see what the Friedgen offense looks like at Maryland. Not the talent that he had at Georgia Tech, but still some good players. First carry of the season is Bruce Perry, and the sophomore from Philadelphia spins to the 36. A pickup of three, and David Fortin was in on the tackle. Let's show you the players around Sean Hill in our starting lineups. Perry won that tailback tailback job and he runs behind these players Melvin Fowler the center is the best of the bunch Todd White at left guard has been around for a couple of years in the program he's the other experienced player a junior and there is Perry he goes with fullback James Lynch Scooter Monroe and Jafar Williams are the starting receivers Monroe caught 14 balls last year Julian Gary did not start but will play a second down run for Mark Riley and the senior from Long Island gets a first down He's the tougher of the two backs, and he gets it out to midfield, a pickup of 13. Here's the Carolina defense, new coordinator there, John Tenuta. You hear all about Julius Peppers, but Ryan Sims, a defensive tackle, will also get an NFL look. The linebackers, David Thornton, a former walk-on, was all over the field against Oklahoma. Back in the secondary, they've had some changes at the strong safety spot. Defonte Coleman and Billy D. Greenwood will both see action. Coleman getting the start. First pass for Hill. It's a first and ten throw. Incomplete. He was looking for Julian Gary, his wide receiver, senior out of Long Island, but Hill missed five. Maryland fans thrilled to see Gary on the field as a receiving option for Sean Hill. Gary was injured in a scrimmage about ten days ago. It was a non-contact drill, and uh, he suffered a neck injury. They had to airlift him to a hospital. There was deep concern, but he was able to practice this week and cleared to play on Wednesday. Second and ten, movement up front, but no flag. Hill throws late. It's incomplete. It's a late long throw for Jafar Williams. Broken up by Michael Waddell. Yeah, that's a dangerous throw, and anytime you let that out route go late, especially with the quickness of this North Carolina defense, you're looking for trouble at quarterback, and Waddell fastest player on this North Carolina team and had a big game on defense a week ago against Oklahoma. Well, after three runs, move the ball down the field. We end up with third and ten after two incomplete passes. And 
Hill sends four in the pattern. Over through his tight end, Matt Murphy, the senior from Michigan, who was open and had a chance to pick up the first down, but it will be a punting situation. Three incompletions at the end of that drop. Well, North Carolina can bring a lot of pressure with their four-man front, but they also like to bring linebackers. And Quincy Monk, number 41, right up the gut, got to Sean Hill early and forced a hurry throw. Brooks Bernard, a good kicker, coming to boot it away. Michael Waddell is back deep for North Carolina to receive. Waddell, who returned to kick for a touchdown at Oklahoma. A poor kick from a guy who is very dependable in the junior Bernard, and it's out of bounds at the 23. Just a 27-yard punt. So on comes Ronald Curry and the North Carolina offense. He's put up some very good numbers, not playing three full seasons because of injury. Second all-time total offense in North Carolina. And David, there is pressure on this young man, a senior, coming into this game. You know, Darian Durant coming in the second half last week against Oklahoma, leads his team to a couple touchdowns, puts him in position to win the game. But you know, Ronald Curry going back and looking at that tape, I didn't think he played that poorly in the first half. First down carry is Willie Parker who bounces it to the outside and explodes all the way down the field. Will not be caught. North Carolina touchdown. Well, that will get the Carolina offense settled. The complete reverse of what happened last week. When they couldn't get anything going early, they make the big play. 77 yards. And we talked about the struggles of Ronald Curry, and last week he got no help from the running game. Only 11 carries for 14 yards for Parker, but a great job bouncing this one outside. That play was designed to go inside off the left tackle. Great vision. And we caught a little bit of Parker's speed out on the outside. I'll say the sophomore from Clinton, North Carolina, who did nothing last week, comes away with the touchdown. Jeff Reed will try. The placement kicks despite the injured ankle and has added the extra point. Willie Parker, 11 carries, 14 yards yesterday or last week. Today, one carry, 77 yards. And the Tar Heels are on top by seven. Well, it was a house of cards for North Carolina because of turnovers to open the game at Oklahoma last Saturday. Here they come out and make the opening statement, a 77-yard Willie Parker run, and the Tar Heels are on top 7-0. As I said, Mike, that was such a big part of the early troubles last week for North Carolina. Bad field position. They couldn't get any run game going, and, of course, the Sooners very tough to run the, the football on. And Parker, a tough day at that tailback spot. Bus one for 77 right out of the shoot here today. Just the confidence for this North Carolina team. Building with that one. Chris Bender kicking off once again to Bruce Perry of Maryland. It goes out of bounds before it crossed the goal line. So it will be much better field position for the Terrapins. John Bunting, the North Carolina head coach, saw this to start the game. Yeah, Richard Moore, number 43, the fullback defender had to go inside. He took him to the inside, and Parker once again, nice job of seeing the crease to the outside, and a pretty nice speed he's showing there on the run down the football field. And John Bonning, big difference in the way this game started off that <laughs> contest last week against Oklahoma. Also. So the violation, the kickoff going out of bounds before it crossed the goal line. The offense gets the ball 30 yards from the kickoff spot at its own 35 for Sean Hill and company. Maryland ran it well on that first drive, then three incompletions. The lone tailback is Perry, running right. And the play was set up to go that way, and seven yards picked up on first down. Billy D. Greenwood made the stop. Sean Hill, the senior quarterback that Ralph Regan turns the controls over to this year. You know, it's one thing to play in practice and, and see yourself improving, but now it's another thing to see in a game, in a new system, uh, with new reads and, and new opportunities. So, uh, you know, I'm anxious to see the, how that's going to happen. I don't know how that's going to come out. So it's, that's where the anxiety comes in. Perry is helping the run game, picks up a first down there. And David, don't you think for Hill, even though he's a senior, everything around him is new, to, so to establish a run 
will be a settling factor for him. Oh, it's always a settling factor for a quarterback. If you've got a run game going, you can do so many things. Play action pass, you get an extra count on the drop back passes, and Hill, even though he had three starts last year, his coming out party was that double overtime win against North Carolina State, and this kid can throw the football. He can make the throws. Down from its own 47. Fake to the fullback and a keeper for the quarterback, gaining just a couple of yards. And uh, ACC fans down in Atlanta, Georgia Tech country. And if you've seen Georgia Tech over the last uh, seven, eight years, all these plays look familiar. Ralph has put in his offense that involves a lot of motion, a lot of window dressing, as the coaches like to say. Yeah, well, and a lot of personnel groupings. Go with two, three tight ends, three, four wide receivers. And as you said, shifting motions, a lot to prepare for for a defensive coordinator each week. A run with Perry, and it's Julius Peppers' long arm of the law there to pull him down. The junior, as John Saunders mentioned at the top of the show, basketball was not a part of Julius Peppers' focus after the hoop season ended last year. He is not going to play basketball this year, just football. He's stronger, bigger, and just as good. Yeah, he's the most talented big man at least athletically in the country and great speed he's starting to get a better feel for playing the game and what a touchdown on the interception return last week against Oklahoma third and 11 they go for the seam and the tight end it's incomplete Matt Murphy was trying to stretch the field and the pressure forced Hill to get rid of it quickly now this is one of the most talented front fours you're going to see in college football this year and you got Julius Peppers on the outside. Evans on the other side. A pretty good defensive end in his own right. And look at how Peppers just gets rid of the blocker on an inside move. Gets the hill right now. Brooks Bernard back for the punt. Boz Allen to receive for the Tar Heels. Bernard gets away a better kick this time. And the Terrapins will keep it inside the goal line. It's where the football is, not the player in college football. So even though his feet eventually touched the line, it was down successfully at the one. Long field for Maryland after Karome Cox made the nice play on a 53-yard punt. Bernard able to pin him inside the 28 times last year. And that's a nice call, Mike. A big difference between college football and the NFL, as you said, it's the position of the ball on the cover team for the punt. And a great job on the punt cover. Mike Tirico, David Norrie back with you. Here in College Park, Maryland, North Carolina scored on its opening play, a 77-yard Willie Parker touchdown run. Now Maryland has the heels backed up at their own one. Ronald Perry, the quarterback, keeps to just gain some space to the three-yard line. Let's check North Carolina out. The offensive line did a good job on the touchdown. Adam Metz, the senior, is the only returning starter. Everyone else is starting for second game. We talked about Willie Parker's 77-yard touchdown run. Moore threw a nice block for him. The receivers are very good. Corey Bailey and Bosley Allen can break the game for you offensively. A lot of focus on this man. 5 of 14 in the game at Oklahoma. Uh, give to Parker. Left side to the five-yard line. Mike Whaley, the linebacker, brought him down. Part of a 3-4 type scheme that Maryland is playing. The senior returning on the defensive front is 98 Charles Hill from Palmer Park here in Maryland. As for the linebackers, in addition to Whaley who just made the play, E.J. Henderson was the top tackler on this Terrapin team. Very talented at 6'2". And a good secondary. Three seniors and a sophomore. Perone Cox made the good play on special teams. He's the underclassman. They need to get to the 11 for a first down. The pressure's on, and Curry goes down. May have gotten the ball outside the goal line to avoid the safety. It will be fourth down, no safety. And the sack for Durant Roundtree. Well, Leon Joe makes this play, the weak side linebacker, number 32. Great play by Curry to avoid that tackle. And then Durant Roundtree almost had himself a safety. And you got to give a lot of credit to Ronald Curry 
to get himself out of that situation. Most quarterbacks around the country, they're going to get hit with a safety. Tight spot for John Lafferty. Only 10 and a half yards from the snap to the kick. Usually at 15. Able to get it away quick with Julian Gary awaiting at the 42. A very good punt returner. Not able to get a block, but will give the Maryland offense great field position. 10-yard return after a 41-yard kick. ABC Sports presentation of college football this Saturday brought to you by Jeep. Makers of Grand Cherokee, Wrangler, and the all-new Jeep Liberty. The Olive Garden. When you're here, your family. And Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money. Get well connected. Well, a great opportunity for Maryland. Best field position of the first three drives. At the Tar Heel 32, they run Perry. He gains a couple of yards. Let's get an update from John Saunders at Times Square Stadium in New York. All right, John, they don't have Michael Vick, but they still have talent and Andre Davis and Lee Suggs, the running back. The running back here, spinning forward, Bruce Perry to the 24-yard line. It's going to bring up third in a couple of yards. Yeah, the Maryland coaches really like Perry at an exceptional fall camp, and what he gives you among the three tailbacks that Maryland will rotate in the game is the breakaway threat. He has a nice burst of speed, and you get him out in space, he can make the secondary members miss. David for the strength of North Carolina's defense at defensive front. Maryland is running the ball effectively thus far. Third and a couple. First down. Perry across the 20 and to the 18-yard line. You think Ralph Regents coming in, wide open offense. You, you know, a lot of passes, a lot of motions, a lot of formation. Nine carries, about 42 yards. That's a very good average. Well, yeah, they're, they're doing a great job up front. In the run game, they haven't protected Hill exceptionally well, but Ralph Friedgen, that's a bit of a misnomer. He always runs the football well, and all you have to do is look at Joe Burns, a tailback down at Georgia Tech right now. In the red zone for the first time. From the 18, a little play-action pass. Tight end could not hang on. That's Jeff Dugan, the sophomore. Dexter Reed, the free safety, had to cover. That's a rare drop. Maryland this year, one of the real strengths of their football team is the depth at the tight end position. And Dugan, now people talk about him as a first teamer maybe this year in the ACC, a guy who could play at the next level, exceptional blocker. And he just didn't quite look that one in. The running back, Perry, ran onto the field late, was not in the huddle. Second and ten. Option and Perry was not there in the tailback spot. Hill gets it back to the 20-yard line. Some confusion there for the Maryland Terrapins. First game for their new head coach, Ralph Friedgen, former Georgia Tech assistant, assistant with the San Diego Chargers as well. But on the defensive side, his team couldn't stop North Carolina at the very start. 77-yard touchdown run by Willie Parker on the first snap for the Tar Heels has put North Carolina up 7-0 here in College Park. Well, we're going to the air in all likelihood on third and 12. And Hill has missed his first five passes. There's a completion. Jafar Williams. Touchdown. Terrapin. This is a great ball. Three-step drop. Quick slant. Jafar Williams. A nice inside move. This is the guy for Maryland that is a game-breaker outside. He is the guy that may step up and be an ACC star this year. And a great job running the football after the catch. Nick Novak was the last-minute decision to be the placement kicker for Maryland. And the redshirt freshman from Charlottesville adds the extra point. It all starts with a good punt that backed North Carolina up to the one. The good defensive se series. The punt return. And then the touchdown. Hill to Williams. Tie game at seven in College Park.
Jafar Williams, who had a breakout spring and summer camp from Maryland, has tied the game at seven with his touchdown catch. And Vidad Sukovic from Yugoslavia will kick it off. Kevin Knight, one of the two deep men for North Carolina. The other deep man is number 18, Michael Waddell. His nickname is Rabbit. The strength and conditioning coach was telling me before the game he hand-timed the Rabbit in the 40 at 4-3. Three different times this spring. He is super fast. See what I mean? Off the Rabbit goes. Michael Waddell pushed out of bounds at the 47-yard line by the kicker. Thank you, Michael. Glad I saved the story for that time. <laughs> The last week against Oklahoma, the Rabbit went 91 yards for a touchdown with a punt return. And he is flat out the fastest player on this roster, but he's got a lot of athletic gifts to bring to the table. He's one of the best cornerbacks you'll see in the ACC. Did a great job of running with the receivers last week as well. I know it is early in this game, very early. I just got the feeling this is one of those noon ACC starts where you get 60 points on the board. Team settling in. Ronald Curry, a play action pass. Airing it out. A penalty marker is not thrown. Contact between Boz Allen and Carone Cox, the receiver and the quarterback. As Curry hung it up deep. And that was a lot of contact, and it took place about 25 yards downfield, just about the time of the release of the football. And Ronald Curry paid for it in the backfield. That was Charles Hill. The nose tackle saying hello. Curry's known as a very good deep ball thrower. Andre Williams, the sophomore from down Tobacco Road in Durham, has come into the game. Little option look. Nice catch. And not much room. Well, that's tough. Your first snap of the game. Leon Joe, the linebacker, made the tackle. Here comes an option pitch right at your face. Grab it and hold on with the Terrapins coming at you. Yeah, with a defense that runs very well at the linebacker position. It's Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, said, we, we're not going to fool a lot of people on defense. We want to feature our linebackers, especially E.J. Henderson and Aaron Thompson. We want to make them make the plays for us all over the football field. Out of the shotgun, spread it out for third and a long nine. Curry moves the pocket right. No receivers open. He'll keep it himself slide out of bounds at the 41. Four yard shot. And a punting situation for North Carolina. Gary Tranquil is the new offensive coordinator for North Carolina. It's Tony Jackson back deep for the Lafferty punt. Trying to pin the Terrapins inside the 20. Short field here. Little pooch kick away out of bounds to the side. This is going to come up to about the 27-8 yard line here. Ball went out of bounds. Well, they're going to say at the 20. So just a 20-yard net, same as if he would have kicked it through the end zone. This part of a triple header Saturday on ABC for college football. It continues next. Many of you will see the defending national champions, Oklahoma, against the Air Force. The people in Chapel Hill said, we've seen enough of Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you will see Colorado State, Colorado. And then in prime time at 8 Eastern, number two, Miami at State College, or Wisconsin against number seven, Oregon, and Joey Harrington. Great action. Triple header this Labor Day Saturday on ABC. From the 20, Hill quick toss to Scooter Monroe. Broke a tackle and got a first down. Brought down by Mercida Perry. And see, that's what's great about Ralph Regent. Maryland gets off to a slow start. Hill having trouble hitting some balls, so he goes to the timing game. Three-step drop, touchdown. Five-step drop, speed out. Hill hits it right on the money. And, and Hill, again, doesn't have the huge arm, but he can make all the throws. Very accurate, very intelligent player at the quarterback position. His father a coach. First and ten from the 30. Mark Riley now in the game at tailback. He gains four yards to the 34. You know, the tailback position was so interesting at Maryland because there was no doubt about who was getting the lion's share of the carries the last couple of years. Lamont Jordan, 
picked by the New York Jets in the draft. They actually had a very good uh, preseason for the Jets, but Jordan had 4,147 rushing yards in his Maryland career. So you had to have an inexperienced group coming back. And that's been the focus of this offseason here in College Park. Hill to throw on second and six. Swing out for Riley. Good move. First down for the senior. And David, as you well know, competition sometimes can elevate the ability of the players involved. And we're seeing it early with Perry and Riley. Now this is a nice job by Riley, but an even better job by Hill. With the naked eye, this looks like an easy throw, but that's a beautiful throw. He gets the ball out on time, puts a little zip on it, puts a little handle on it for Riley. Give your tailback a chance to pick up yards after the catch. First down from the 42. Now play action. Gets away from the rush for the moment. Throws on the run incomplete. You're not getting away too far from Julius Peppers when he's <laughs> coming after you. 6'6", 285. Good luck. He is in the backfield in a hurry, and once again, an inside move. He's hounding Hill, but nice job by Sean Hill to get out and get away from Peppers. I bet you he surprised Peppers a little bit with his mobility in the pocket, and that's one thing that really jumped off the film for these North Carolina defensive coaches. A quick snap and a quick toss, but I don't know if Maryland was set for a second. The penalty marker came down, trying to catch him a little bit off guard, but did not. Jack Childress, the referee in this ACC crew. We saw 75 for Maryland. Eric Dumas in there at left tackle. Earlier, it was the redshirt freshman C.J. Brooks when Peppers got in the backfield. So uh, there's already been a slight change of trying somehow, some way to defend Peppers. Since the pass was incomplete, North Carolina declines the penalty, thus we set up third and ten. Well, Peppers, at this point in his career, is a little bit easier to block in the running game. In, in pass protection, he is a low, and uh, he is truly the premier sack specialist in the country. Four receivers. Look out. Hill goes down via Peppers. On cue, Julius shows that incredible quickness. Yeah, he made Eric Dumas the left tacker, the, the left tackle fan on this block. Oh. I mean, blinding quickness getting inside the tackle to make that play. And Sean Hill, when he backs out in those drops, he's got to keep an eye peeled to Julius Peppers because he's liable to catch a few blindside hits today. Now 22 career sacks breaks the tie with Lawrence Taylor. Bernard on to kick. This one a much better kick than the previous two. And he'll get some good bounce out of it also. That's a good punch. That'll be a 56-yard punt downed by Maryland at the knob. Now the one asset you can't teach to rushing the passer is speed and quickness. And that initial move on the second step inside it's NFL material. And then the closing speed to get to Hill in the pocket. Well, you have to do something. You either have to give the tackle help if you're inexperienced over there, or what Freedon likes to do sometimes, move away from Peppers and roll out away from him. Well, you can also go with the quick passing game. And, and as you said, Mike, a little extra help. Keep a running back in to help on Peppers. Andre Williams, a first down run. He gets about three yards to the 13. Carolina got off to the quick start. Those of you just joining us, Willie Parker's 77-yard touchdown run. But then they were forced to punt. And uh, after being backed up at their own one, and a three and out in the last drive as well. well. Gary Blackney, defensive coordinator for Maryland, said the key to the game when North Carolina has the ball is the matchup outside. Our corners are going to have to play man-to-man. -man. We need eight in the box to stop the running game and to harass Curry in the throwing game. Second and ten. Curry adjusting the play at the line. Beats the play clock. Well, the adjustment didn't get communicated to everyone. And he gets to the 16-yard line. Third and a long three coming up for Ronald Curry, who's heard a lot this week about Darian Durant, the redshirt freshman who came in and played well at Oklahoma. Curry knows this is an important game in his career. It's a business, and the coaches are here to win games, and they're going to have to 
put the best man in to win. You know, um, right now uh, I didn't have a great camp, but I had a good camp. Uh, um, I should be playing better than what I am right now. And you know, Durant is playing well, so you know, if I don't turn it around, I mean, Durant may be the best player for the job. That's a shocking statement from one of the highly, most highly recruited players in recent memory. Quick slant, Oz Allen, first down to the 34-yard line. As he's gang tackled there, but a pickup of 17 will move the chains. David, we were in the room when uh, we spoke with Ronald Curry yesterday. I was taken aback a little bit. It was almost as if, hey, if I, if I can't get it done, let him go. I'm, I'm all done here. That was a nice slant ball here, thrown perfectly on time. And, you know, I, I was surprised as well, Mike, but you look back at Ronald Curry, one of the most highly acclaimed high school athletes in the history of high school athletics. I think this week was the first time that anybody ever questioned his ability. Mm. That's a good call. Curry first down, he'll run it. Gets out of a tackle, six yards. Second and four, let's check what's going on in Blacksburg. Back to John in New York. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Randy Edsel is the head coach of the Yukon Huskies, former assistant at a couple of places. Georgia Tech and Syracuse come to mind. It's the run of a yard there for Andre Williams. Tackle made by Mike Whaley. And UConn had their senior quarterback who's been battling injuries his entire career walk into Randy Edsel's office 10 days ago and say, Coach, I'm going to leave. I just can't go to pain anymore. Goodbye. And he was left with unproven quarterbacks going down to Virginia Tech, but they're hanging in there. you got to love that if you're a head coach, getting that sort of decision. John. Not close to the opener. <laughs> right. You look at, I'll tell you what, Mike, you look at the Virginia Tech schedule. If, if, if ever there was a schedule designed to win a national championship or at least get into a BCS game, that's the type of schedule you want. Near third and a long two, needing to get to the 44. Curry tried to make a move but lost his footing. We had torrential rains in the Maryland area last night. The field dried very well as I walked out there, but at the base of the grass, it's a little damp and Curry falls. Now the Maryland defensive coaches watched the film off a week ago and Oklahoma, they put a lot of people up on the line of scrimmage. They locked up man-to-man -man on the outside, harassed Ronald Curry. They're going with the same game plan today in College Park and it's working. Curry off to another slow start. Tied at seven, end of the first ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll return after this message and a word from your ABC station. Yep. The second quarter starts with a John Lafferty punt. And Julian Gary will let relax on the field, covered at the 29-yard line. And Madison Hedgecock, the backup fullback, downed it there. So the Terrapins will take over at the 29. Let's check the Pacific Life summary. How we've gotten started here in College Park. First conference game, first play for North Carolina. Willie Parker got a good block from his fullback and used his speed to go 77 yards for a touchdown to put the Tar Heels on top. But with great field position after a good defensive hold and good special teams, Sean Hill to Jafar Williams, 20 yards, capped off a six-play drive, and we're all tied at seven. Option toss, Bruce Perry. Spilled at the 34-yard line. Good thing David Thornton, the linebacker, got a hand on him. John Tenuta is a defensive coordinator at North Carolina. He comes over from Ohio State off of last year, and. We talked to him a couple days ago. He was very worried about Maryland's running game and specifically their ability to run the option. Ralph Regan runs some option. Remember Joe Hamilton at Georgia Tech and even George Godsey last year. And Hill's got a nice little gift to coming on the outside and dishing the ball off on pitches. Second and five. Perry left side. Not much there. Errol Hood had good run support from the corner. Mercedes Perry there as well. There is John Tenuta, straightforward football coach. This is a staff full of those kind of guys. Uh, this is just a, John Bunning's a pro coach. He was with New Orleans as an assistant, St. Louis, many places. And he surrounded himself with some good, solid football guys. 
Yeah, well, Tenuta is a solid football guy, and he had a pretty talented group on defense for the Buckeyes last year. Mike Doss, safety, is a lot of people's first team strong safety coming into the year. Third and five, pass was high and behind Jafar Williams, the timing throw, and it's a quick three and out for Maryland. Both defenses having the better of play the last few minutes. Again, Maryland's first game, North Carolina's second. And the old adage is always you improve the most game one to game two. Maryland's uh, going to have some mistakes as we go through the afternoon. Speedster Bosley Allen back deep to receive for North Carolina. Brooks Bernard's fourth punt is his best by far. 55 yards in the air. Allen dropped it. Got past a few would-be tacklers, and now the sidelines open. Bosley Allen still going and taken down at the 42-yard line. The drop may have helped the return. Now you're absolutely right, Mike. When a punt returner drops the football, I think we have a flag on the play, but mm -hmm. when a punt returner drops the football, that creates coverage men coming out of their lanes because they see that ball free and oftentimes it turns into a big punt return and Allen a nice job of getting that to the outside finding the crease and almost breaking this one for longer yards we saw the flag flying in there at the end it was almost behind the play where the illegal hands happened so North Carolina's drive instead of starting at its own 41 will be taken back to the 10 Let's put on your uh, trivia hat for the Aflac trivia question. Since joining the ACC back in the early 50s, who's the only first-year Maryland head coach with a winning record? That would be their overall record for the season, not just in the league. The answer will come later on. First and 10 from the 10 for Curry. A flag is down as... Just a couple of yards for the touchdown maker from earlier, Willie Parker. Thrown by the referee. Probably a procedural call against Carolina. It was, so it'll be first and 15, but John Saunders is going to check in on what's happening in the Big East. Deny the big man a score, but the Mountaineers in the debut for Rich Rodriguez leading 10 0. West Virginia comes here to College Park in two weeks. First and 15. Lucky to avoid a safety for the second time today. The Tar Heels, Willie Parker, met by E.J. Henderson. Top tackler from last year. Uh, Henderson's going to be a 10 12 year veteran in the NFL. This is one of the best inside linebackers in college football great playmaker has great speed and finds a way to make plays he's an exceptional tackler coming out of that linebacker spot a five yard penalty a four yard loss it's second and 19 maybe a curry keeper just to create some space here they will run a play trying to follow his blocks parker he does but he's met by randell jones the senior free safety who's actually started a game at quarterback in his Maryland career. It's going to be third and long ahead. Now Ronald Curry has to be asking himself, what do I need to do to get some field position? And last week, at the end of the first quarter against Oklahoma, 31 to 7. The Tar Heels had terrible field position. It seemed that whole first quarter they were backed up against their own end zone, and the field position, Mike, hasn't been much better today. They need to get to the 20 for a first down. Third and 13. They're going to run. Do something safe. That should be a safety. Yes, it is. What a job by Tyrone Stewart coming up. And the ball came down on the goal line. Correctly called. And the Terrapins take the lead. So Stewart, a nickelback, comes in and makes a big play on the run. Now Stewart closes very quickly. Gets down low. 
What a tackle. That's a big time play for a nickelback to come up and make that kind of hit. Free kick coming up. Aaron will get the ball. They now have the lead, 9-7. Looking back at the safety, Tyrone Stewart. Left side of the screen, creeping up late. They bring him on the safety blitz, and he makes the play in the end zone. Julian Gary, the punt returner, lost his shoe, but still ran forward for another 13 yards. His shoe is back at the 31. He got out to the 43. Making quick moves. So the tailback, Willie Parker, Trapped behind the goal line for the safety, and Stewart, who was on special teams, blocking there. Just to feel good about the play he made for the safety. Maryland's defensive strategy is really playing well here early. They're bringing a lot of defenders up in the box, creating a lot of pressure against Ronald Curry, and they continue to go man-to-man -man outside on the wide receivers. Maryland with the ball, leading 9-7. First down run for Perry. Hurdles forward for three yards into the waiting arms of the senior middlebacker puts him up from Jacksonville, North Carolina. A gain of three. Here's the answer to our Aflac trivia question. The only first-year Maryland coach since they joined the ACC to have a winning record in his rookie season, Bobby Ross, 1982, a record of eight and four, and Ralph Friedgen was around for that year. Ralph Friedgen was offensive coordinator for three ACC championships and also was the offensive coordinator for Ross when Ross took the Chargers to the Super Bowl in the early 90s. Second and seven. Incomplete for Jafar Williams. Michael Waddell was there on coverage. Seen a lot of quick stuff in the Maryland passing game. Now, when you have problems with Peppers up front, and as we mentioned, Peppers not the only guy who can rush the, the passers. Three defensive linemen for North Carolina combined for 28 sacks a year ago. Peppers led the country. And when you have that type of pressure as an offense, you want to take some of those options away. And Friedgen right now going with the short passing game with Sean Hill. Third and seven. Look at the pressure. And once again, Hill goes down, reintroduced to Julius Peppers. <laughs> he is so good. Yeah, he's good. And, and you know, this front four is so athletic, a lot of speed. This time he utilizes an outside move and a little strength there. I mean, he got locked up on the outside with the left tackle and just forced his way through. He's moving up the charts pretty quick. Yeah, two today, Marcus Jones may be passed before halftime. Greg Ellis before September's done. Puts Bernard to kick again after a good punt last time. Nice one here, 54 yards, takes Allen inside his 10, and he only is able to get two yards on the return. The coverage by Denard Wilson forces a long field for North Carolina. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet. If only everything was as dependable as a Chevy. Chevy, we'll be there. Monster.com who reminds you, job good, life good. Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. And Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it up, Bud Light. A beautiful campus in College Park, and we bring you inside Bird Stadium on a pleasant 75 degrees Saturday afternoon. Mike Tirico, David Norrie, glad you've joined us. To start a triple header Saturday on ABC, you'll see the defending national champion, Colorado, or uh, Oklahoma, take on Air Force out in Colorado, or Colorado, Colorado State next. First down for Ronald Curry and the heels. Willie Parker, tackled by the corner, Tony Akonlawan, just shy of the 20. That's a pickup of five first down yards. David, what do you see offensively for the Tar Heels thus far? Well, once again, Curry starting with some pretty poor field position, but, you know, I think... With Maryland playing as tight as they are out on the wide receivers, locking up man-to-man, -man, I think you need to take some shots down the field. Ronald Curry's only taken one crack at a deep ball. you got to penalize a defense for playing this style of football. Option with Parker. He got to the 20, but not much farther. Tony Jackson in on the tackle. And to amplify your point, the last six tacklers I've called have been DBs for Maryland. Yeah, they're, they're getting the safeties involved up on the line of scrimmage, and it was no secret. Gary Blackney said, I'm going to 
I'm going to attack this offense with numbers. And on the other side of the coin, you can see the play calling for North Carolina. Gary Trank will be in a little bit conservative, especially with all the things that went wrong, all the turnovers early in the football game a week ago against Oklahoma. Need to get to the 24 for a first down. Curry let the man get up in the air who was rushing, but he's going to end up a half yard short of the first down. Looks like it will be fourth and an inch. And, and I don't like this call on third and short. Ronald Curry in the pocket. I mean, if you're going to throw the football on third and short with Ronald Curry, I like moving him. I like giving him a run pass option. And granted, he did pull the football down there, but he's least dangerous when he's pulling the football down and running out of the pocket, especially straight back up the gut over the center guard position. He got a good spot. He's still going to be shy of the first down. And a punting situation for the Char Heels. Credit this Maryland defense that gave up 440 yards per game last year. Very good start in game one here. John Lafferty comes back in. He's been very busy thus far. Here is Julian Gary. Top receiver the last couple of years and dangerous punt returner. Lafferty was pretty busy last week. He had nine punts for almost 400 yards against the Sooners. I think he had to ice his leg down after that game. Fake, and they run it with the fullback first down. So North Carolina, relatively deep in its own territory, comes out with a wrinkle. And Richard Moore, the up back, took the direct snap and picked up five yards. Now you got to love this call by John Bunning, the head coach, especially from this field position inside his own 25. Probably the only college coach you'll see going forward inside his own 25 in college football is Bobby Bowden. But Bunning, a nice job of springing a trick play there and more moving it forward for the first down. First and 10 for the 29. Now play action with Curry. Having a tough time getting his footing. Down the middle and incomplete. Corey Bailey, the intended receiver. Three men covering him. Back to Times Square Stadium. An update from John Saunders. We saw Nebraska last week with TCU struggle offensively. Eric Crouch missed a couple of days this week with the stomach flu. It wasn't at 100 percent, but that's one of those where you expect the Cornhuskers to get in gear quick. Quick swing out to Brandon Russell is well defended by Rod Littles, the backup strong safety, the senior from Gainesville, Florida, and from Gator Country made one of those ball plays. Third and long coming up. The Littles is an accomplished hitter. And he recognized this play immediately. That's a great job by a backup defensive back coming up quickly and making a play behind the line of scrimmage. And David, that's now twice that we've seen backup safeties with good play recognition by Maryland. Yeah, you, you can't get much better in recognition than number 33 right there. And he makes a sure tackle in the backfield. Play clock running down. It's at two and one. And North Carolina will not get this playoff was third and 13 to start. Now it's going to be third and 18. They had a safety before. It was third and 19. So the Tar Heels look like they're playing week one at times in this first half. Yeah, Gary Blackney has definitely put his stamp on Maryland defensive football early in this game and early in the season. Uh, if there's one thing that's apparent, they're going to attack. And they're going to bring numbers, both with defensive backs and linebackers. Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, was the head coach for a decade at Bowling Green in Ohio. There is Gary, now back as a defensive coordinator, also coaching the defensive backs. Needing to get just shy of the 40 for a first down. High toss is court caught, but shy of the 40. Tony Okonglawan in on the coverage. 
Corey Bailey and company come off the field. Well, this is a nice ball by Ronald Curry. Probably the first good throw he's made this afternoon with the exception of a quick slant. And watching him off the film a week ago against Oklahoma, he has his most success when he's throwing the balls to the outside of the field, deep outs, post corners, and the deep balls. So North Carolina's got to give him some time in the pocket to let those receivers come free. 40-yard kick, Gary takes it to 28. And he's tackled at the 35-yard line, seven-yard return. Despite the fake punt that worked, Maryland gets North Carolina off the field and the offense comes back out. Terp seven, heels nine. Midway through second quarter here in College Park, Sean Hill in the Maryland offense, decent field position, their own 35. His throw on the run was a good one, but incomplete Maurice Shanks. The redshirt freshman from Hampton, Virginia, couldn't make his first collegiate catch. Yeah, this was a nice ball, Mike, and good sell on the fake in the backfield. Gets out quickly, Hill running well, and that's exactly where that ball has to be delivered. Low and to the outside. Shanks needs to make that play, and Ralph Friedgen knows it. Second down, the draw with Riley, the senior. Only gains a couple of yards. It will be third and eight. Draws, quick passes, just trying to keep Julius Peppers at bay for a second. Next Saturday, another triple header of college football on ABC. It will start with these Tar Heels going to see their old friend Mac Brown and Texas in Austin, followed by Michigan. The Wolverines in action today. It will be Rick Neuheisel's opener with Washington. And then in prime time, Notre Dame at Nebraska for the first time in a half century. The Irish visit Lincoln. Triple header next Saturday on ABC Sports. Third and eight. Peppers offside. Free play. And Peppers came to help with the knockdown of Hill, but it will be third and three instead of third and eight. Can't blame Julius Peppers. <laughs> He's in a track stance there. He's just going around somebody. Now you get Maryland in obvious passing situations and it's going to be a tough ride and Julius Peppers you know, he feels some good sack numbers. Now yeah, very interesting see the back end of the play there was a hold holding Peppers trying to get back to Sean Hill. So we'll end up the third name. Peppers at the top of the screen couldn't quite get back on side. Maryland hit with a five yarder as well. They cancel and will line up and play third down again. And, you know, Mike, to be effective and for Maryland to deal with this pass rush, they've got to start throw, throwing the football in obvious running situations. First down, second down, play action. Four receivers here for third and eight. Peppers held at bay. The pass was behind the receiver, but was pulled down. Short of the first down for Rich Parson. Makes his first catch. And when they go back and they look at the game film tomorrow, the offensive coaches for Maryland are going to say, hey, Rich, you need to get about three or four more yards depth on that curl route. You need to find the first down stakes and make sure, even if you're coming back to help Sean Hill, you've got to come back and make that catch beyond the first down mark. Well, interesting here. Fourth and a yard and change, and... Maryland will come out looking like they will go for it. See if they try to draw Carolina offside or they take a shot at it. Yep. Try to draw them off. Now they'll take the five yard penalty and punt. Why not? You drew Peppers offside just to play before. You know, the interesting thing about that Julius Peppers play, it's a great lesson to young players watching. Julius Peppers, even though he was offside... Kept coming. In your mind, you say, free play, I screwed up. Forget. Well, the fact that he kept coming caused the holding penalty and kept them in a third and eight situation. There is the rabbit, Michael Waddell, the junior from Ellerbee, North Carolina, awaiting Brooks Bernard's punt. Another 50-plus yard kick. That's 50 on the nose. That's perfect. 
send the punt catch man right out of bounds at the 11 yard line. So once again, Bernard does the job. Maryland special teams have been good. And Ronald Curry has a long field to deal with. We mentioned this is the first of three. Oklahoma's at Air Force. Coming up next for most of you on ABC. Some of you will see Colorado State, Colorado. And then in prime time, what a scene it's going to be. Now 100,000 in Happy Valley. And Adam Talaferro comes out on the field with Penn State to take on number two Miami in Larry Coker's debut. And Wisconsin, beaten up in its opening game against Virginia, goes to Eugene to take on Oregon. That nasty atmosphere of Oxen Stadium. Triple header here on ABC. Willie Parker's first down run. Nice job running to the wide side to get to the 19-yard line. Once again, North Carolina starting on their own 10. And Mike, you bring up Autzen Stadium. It's it's interesting. In the 80s and the 90s, the toughest stadium to play for a quarterback on the road was Husky Stadium up in Seattle. And they've turned that around at Autzen Stadium. Right now, Autzen is by far the loudest and toughest place to play on the road for a team in the Pac-10. Second and a couple, and nothing is happening on that one. Try to run Parker, but C.J. Feldheim, the sophomore from Parkton, Maryland, made the tackle, and again, Curry's going to have a third down to face. You know, you talk about atmospheres. Moderately disappointed in these Maryland fans thus far. Here's your team, new era. I know your team hasn't been to a bowl game in 11 years. Pretty good crowd, not sold out, but a good crowd. They've been very quiet here this afternoon. And yeah, this is an opening day. I mean, this is an ACC opener yeah. and the first game of the season with the Tar Heels knocking on the door. Curry had time. Coverage is good, and it's incomplete. Chesley Borders, the junior from Shelby, North Carolina, what a good game last week, was well covered by Oconlawan and Tony Jackson. Yeah, Oconlawan and Jackson did a great job of keeping their depth. When Curry let this ball go, and he's facing a little pressure in the pocket, both defenders for Maryland had better depth in the defensive backfield than the receiver. And when that happens as a quarterback, you got to pull it down and go to a second choice. I know North Carolina fans at home are saying, well, is that our receivers open? Is Curry missing it? I don't see many open guys here. You know, the defense gets scholarships too. They're playing all right. The punt by Lafferty. Well, there's the advantage of an experienced punt returner. Julian Gary did a nice job making the catch at the 49. Good field position, so Ralph Friedgen will work off that sheet and find what plays will work. Speaking of the sheet, Ralph Friedgen has taken offensive game planning to the next level. The cyber fridge, <laughs> if you will. Look at Ralph in his office yesterday. You were in there, David. Yeah, he's he's gone a little bit too high tech for me, and this is one of the most sophisticated game film systems, not only in college football, but also in NFL and they spent a lot of money they had to go out and recruit a specialist a technician to work that system and bring him here to Maryland pass to Julian Gary is complete not got a bounds after a gain of six a throw on first down how about that here's what college football's come to let's let's get a strength coach let's get a good offensive quarter let's get a good computer guy too huh Every, everybody's <laughs> looking for an edge and uh, you can tell Ralph was pretty entranced with that with that film computer system and you know not a better guy to have it than Ralph Reed and the way he lines up and all the multiple sets and formations the ability to break the stuff down take it on the road with you run on second down will be a first down carry David Thornton tackles Bruce Perry but a yard too late the chains will move you know, Maryland had to come up financially to get the job done, not just to hire Friedgen as a head coach and a good staff of assistants, but also the computers. $1.5 million for those 27 computers that the coaches and the players can use to break down game film in a one-on-one -on -one mode. The times are changing, and football's trying to keep up with it. Nobody's better at it than Ralph Friedgen. The quick toss is complete to Jafar Williams. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Boy, Quarterback standing to my right had to love that. That was perfectly timed on that throw. Well, and, and, and that's a big characteristic of a Ralph Region quarterback. If you're going to play for him, you got to get back, you got to throw the ball on time, and you got to hit the automatic throws. When you got a guy open on a 10, 12 yard out, you got to hit him 10 out of 10. And Sean Hill, pretty nice job on that last play. And I love when they do this. Ralph did it at Tech a lot. The tempo is very hot. Here's the run for Perry. 26 yard line. First down. 
and 10. And you watch, Maryland's going to get in the huddle. No nonsense. They're going to be out of there in about eight seconds and call a play and get going. Well, that's a big part of the job for a quarterback. When your team's on the move, and you're running the ball, you got a good mix of run and pass. You want to get in and out of the huddle right up to the line of scrimmage. Pretty soon the defenders, the defensive team, they start feeling like they're on their heels a little bit. Nice drive here, engineered by Sean Hill. Valvoline Halftime Show, John and Terry coming up with scores and highlights. Hill's pumping, Williams got behind his defender and couldn't adjust to the ball in the air. There is a penalty marker down back at the quarterback spot. And it's holding on Maryland. In addition to the scores and highlights with John and Terry at Times Square Stadium, a feature on Larry Coker as well. Uh, this is a nice job by Williams. The ball was not going to be, it ended up being overthrown, but Williams did a nice job of keeping his body between the ball and the defender. So the penalty comes from the line of scrimmage not where the holding penalty occurred minus 10 yards it's a slight rules adjustment in an otherwise quiet season in the rule change department second and 20. screen set up but read very well perry tackled by errol hood who sniffed out the screen the errol hood is a cornerback who's very valuable in this day and age with all the spread offenses you need quarterbacks and defensive backs that can come up and make hits on wide receivers. And nice job by Hood there to duck under the block and then make a sure tackle. Matt Crawford at 314 pounds was trying to get out there to get the cornerback, but had no chance. Maryland has taken a timeout before facing second and 24 here with a minute and 36 seconds left in this first half. John Bunting, who was a head coach, at one point, his uh, younger days at Rowan College in New Jersey got that Division III school to the playoffs. They were 38-14-2. His dream job back at his alma mater and a nightmare scheduled to start at Oklahoma, a conference game at Maryland, and then you go down to Austin where not only are you playing Texas in Austin, which is tough, but it's Mac Brown, the former North Carolina coach who recruited some of the players but certainly has uh, deep ties with the Tar Heels, and then Florida State and at North Carolina State before September. That's why some are saying, David, that this is a must win on September 1st for North Carolina. Well, you take Oklahoma out of the equation right there and just give me the rest of the schedule and still I'm, I, I'd say, John John Bunning, what are you doing? And and he, he met with his seniors. He said, hey, we want to take a look at playing Oklahoma. And he was curious to see how his seniors reacted. And they gave him a standing ovation in a team meeting. And it was really the focal point for all their off-season conditioning. I think it'll be great for this program that they went ahead and played the Sooners early. After the timeout, it is second and 24 for Maryland. Leading 9-7. Hill steps up, shoveled it away, and the pass was completed to Darrell Whitmer to the 35-yard line, and Hill will take a timeout. He had to get creative. They brought some extra heat with Kevin Knight, the corner, coming in. Now this gives you some idea of the athletic ability of Sean Hill. First he gets hit in the head by a defender. Safety blitz coming, steps up, and in an option play type fashion, pitches the ball forward. That's a super play by your senior quarterback. It was a nice job defensively by John Tenuta. He brought the corner from the same side as Julius Pepper. So if they did try to double team on that side, no help there. We mentioned this is the opener for Ralph Friedrin. Next week, the second of three to start, Eastern Michigan from Ypsilanti, Michigan, comes in with Jeff Woodruff, their head coach. You know, their quarterback coach is Carrie Conklin, who played in the NFL in the area at Washington and was, of course, with the uh, University of Washington Huskies. And on down into the conference schedule there as you go through the remainder of the season. But good non-conference schedule with Eastern Michigan and West Virginia there. Not quite the North Carolina schedule, You're right. though. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Troy State, Eastern Michigan, a little easier than Oklahoma, Texas. This is third and long, third and 19. Hill's trying to run him into field goal range. It's taken down at the 30-yard line. You're absolutely right, Mike. That was the play call. That was the idea behind the call right there. Let's not take any risks. We're in a low-scoring game, a game that looked like it was going to be high-scoring early, and it's, it's starting to look a little bit like last year's 13-10. 10 game 
<laughs> and and that play call right there was designed to just get a little bit better field position for a field goal try. Thanks for reminding me that I said it was looking like one of those high scoring games. <laughs> hey Mike, I was thinking it though. <laughs> Nick Novak. Even, even, even though I didn't say, say it, I was thinking. First field goal attempt of his career. It'll be from 47 yards. The punter Bernard is the holder. Slight wind at his back. No chance. That was even wide left of the stanchion that brings the net up behind the goalpost. North Carolina, 32 seconds left, and they'll have the ball at their own 30. Put it in the deep freeze, you take a couple of shots here with 30 seconds left. 32, excuse me. 32 seconds to go, and and you only have one timeout left. You got to be real conservative. I think right here, a draw play, maybe a screen, a safe pass, and then if you break it, go ahead and get up to the line of scrimmage or use that last timeout. Curry will hand it off. Only a yard for Andre Williams, and that's going to bring an end to the half. So other than the 77-yard first snap for North Carolina, David, 89 yards on 29 plays for the Tar Heel offense. That's not very good. They've been in 11 pass situations. Curry scrambled a few times. They've only completed three balls. And the play calling, and once again, has been pretty conservative especially coming off the turnovers last week against Oklahoma. Valvoline Halftime Show with John and Dick. Terry coming up after the break. 9-7, Maryland leads halftime in College Park. All set for the third quarter here in College Park. Maryland in its opener leading 0-1 North Carolina. 9-7. Mike Tirico, former UCLA quarterback David Norton. I know a lot of our friends down on Tobacco Road are asking, hey, when's Durant coming in, a quarterback for North Carolina? Ronald Curry's putting up terrible numbers here in the first half. Well, he's three for six, and uh, only two of those passes went for positive yardage. But to be fair to it, North Carolina's had really rough field position, starting up against their own goal line on at least four drives. I think Ronald Curry, if he can get some better field position, if they can get him into some throwing situations that will take the pressure off him, maybe some first down, second down throws, I think he'll have success in the second half, and I do think North Carolina will continue to go with Ronald Curry. Yeah, Maryland has played very good defense thus far in the first 30 minutes. Let's not overlook that in the storylines here this afternoon. But I'll suck it. Vidad Silkovic, I beg your pardon, will kick it off to start the second half. Carolina's going to get its hands on the ball first. Nice deep kick by Silkovic. And a long field will start at the 20. Well, let's take you back to our Pacific Life. First half highlights. Game summary starts with the very first play from scrimmage for North Carolina. Willie Parker, the sophomore back, going 77 yards. But after that, the offense didn't do much. Only 60 seven more yards. Sean Hill missed his first five passes, but then hit Jafar Williams for a 20-yard touchdown, tied at seven after one. And then Parker, who scored the touchdown earlier, was tackled by Tyrone Stewart in the end zone, a safety. That's the only scoring of the second quarter. Curry and the heels to the air on first down. Ronald's got nobody open. Finally finds a receiver breaking free and is caught by senior Corey Bailey. A gain of seven. Curry, slow to get up. Spoke to Ralph Regent as he led the Terrapins on the field after halftime. First half as head coach went for you? Well, not really. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we can play better offensively. I think we're playing good defensively. I think our special teams, especially our punting unit, has done a wonderful job. we got to continue to do that second half, and we got to move the ball on offense. If we do that, I think we'll be in good shape. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks. Ralph Regis, he came out of the locker room. A run for Andre Williams, not able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Leon Joe made the tackle, so eight yards on first down, minus one on second down. Yeah, but I like the first down play call by Gary Tranquil. Play action pass, get Ronald Curry back, give him a few opportunities to survey the playing field. And on that first down pass, a nice job by Bailey coming back to help his quarterback. Gary Tranquil, 40-year assistant, was the offensive coordinator at Virginia last year. Needing to get to the 30-yard line. Blitz comes. 
from the corner. Curry tries to run away from it and cannot. Rod Littles came all the way around the formation to make the play, and it's three and out on the opening drive for North Carolina. As mentioned, other than that 77-yard opening play, Gary Blackney's defense has been very good here this afternoon. John Lafferty was busy in the first half. Julian Gary back deep to receive for Maryland. Line drive kick. Gets a bounce away from Gary. Now he'll let it go. It'll end up being a 41-yard punt. Down by reserve corner Kevin Knight of North Carolina. So Maryland will take over at the 32. and Sean Hill will bring the Terrapins offense out. One week from Monday, it will be the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football. The Giants taking on the Denver Broncos at New Invesco Field in Colorado at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ABC. Giants were down here in Baltimore yesterday and got beat up by the Ravens in a preseason rematch of the Super Bowl. Starts for real next weekend, and you'll see Monday Night Football again here on ABC. Sean Hill and the Terps start from their own 32. Pass is knocked down and incomplete. Will Chapman, the sophomore, the least heralded of the four men on the defensive front, knocked it down. Defensive lineman getting better at that skill. Teams actually practice this during game week. They get to depth in front of the quarterback, get those hands up, get a deflection, maybe even a turnover. Nice job by Chapman penetrating into the backfield. Second down and 10. And a quick toss to the receiver, Darrell Whitmer, who is pulled down by Errol Hood, the senior quarterback out of North Carolina. You look at this North Carolina defense, and they've got a lot of talent at all three levels across the board. Of course, the very talented front four, some linebackers that can really run. David Thornton last week against the Sooners had a huge game, 14 tackles. And then the defensive backs are very good covermen and tackle exceptionally well for a defensive secondary. Both teams are two of eight on third down conversions. Terps actually two of nine. Correct the first half stats. Offsides on North Carolina. A little shovel pass is incomplete to Bruce Perry. But again, the marker came down for offsides before the third and 15, so it'll be third and 10. Jack Childress, our ACC official here this afternoon, talked to the ACC officials on the field, a few of them before the game, and they said one or two of their colleagues might be working in the NFL as replacement officials, but a lot of former ACC officials have gone on to the league, and some have called their old colleagues and said, hey, don't go, and they are respecting their friends. Third and 10, Hill brought down by Peppers, the third sack of the game for the two sports star who's now focused totally on football. If Maryland is going to continue on this football game and have a chance to win this ACC opener, they have to stay out of obvious passing situations. Third and 10, third and 15, and you're going to be up against the wall. Julius Peppers, four tackles today, three behind the line of scrimmage, and he is delivering once again. Sam Aiken is back to catch Brooks Bernard's punt. Beautiful kick. He has been great today. 55 yards. Aiken from the 16. A very good coverage job. By Denard Wilson and A.J. Henderson, who made the tackle. Peppers, three sacks. His team only seven points. 
First college football Saturday of the season in College Park, Maryland 9, North Carolina 7. Second drive of the second half for the Tar Heels. From their own 29, Ronald Curry. Pass is incomplete for Corey Bailey as Curry was lit up by Charles Hill, the nose tackle from Baltimore suburb of Palmer Park, Maryland. And Curry was looking out to his left on a combination route. Brandon Russell and Corey Bailey. And I'll tell you what, Mike, he is not getting many free receivers down the football field. Maryland's doing a great job. And in a tight scoring game, an ACC opener, Ronald Curry making very sure he doesn't turn the ball over. The work out of the shotgun for second and 10. Blitz coming up the middle. Chases Curry out of the pocket. Throws on the run and the pass is caught at midfield. Well, a very good job defensively. Sam Aiken able to get free to make the catch. The pressure was on and Curry made a play. And this is what Ronald Curry gives you at the quarterback position. Initially, he's looking down the center of the field, trying to go to Corey Bailey. Moves to his right. Great feet. And how about putting a little air under that ball, throwing it out over a linebacker, dropping it into Aiken. And for the first time, North Carolina on the move. They're at midfield. I don't even think they know what Maryland territory is here this afternoon. Quarterback draw with a nice block. Curry is able to get to the 45-yard line. Aaron Thompson made the tackle. Second and five coming up. And with this field position, it really opens up the playbook for Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator. Gives you a lot more options. Here's our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Willie Parker's first snap touchdown. Most of the offense for Carolina. Quarterback Sean Hill missed his first five, eight of 14 since then. Tyrone Stewart's tackle for safety, the difference in this game right now. Andre Williams tries to stretch it out, but E.J. Henderson was holding on until the rest of the defense got to him. Back to the original line. This defensive line for Maryland was a real big question mark coming into the 2001 season. But Ralph Region couldn't talk enough during fall camp about their development. And they have really been strong this afternoon. And their job is to engage that offensive line, let this talented group of linebackers make plays. And giving up seven points here with a little over ten minutes to go in the third quarter. David, I believe these are the first two snaps in Maryland territory for the Tar Heels today. It's third down. The blitz is coming. Curry throws. The pass is caught, caught but just short of the first down for Chesley Borders. He went up high and made a nice catch, but he's going to be marked short of the first down. It's fourth and less than a yard in Terp territory. That was a tough play by Borders, and I mean literally physically tough. He had to catch that ball in between two zone defenders. He knew he was going to take a hit. Curry shaded him to the outside and creates a big fourth and one situation. For the first time, we welcome the fans here to this game this afternoon as an active participant. The running back, Williams, slipped and fell on the way to the line of scrimmage. His knee came down back at the 42, so they won't even measure. It is a fourth down stop for Maryland. Maintains its 9-7 lead. The defense getting North Carolina off the field. And uh, David, the former quarterback, we look at the total numbers for both quarterbacks in this game. 14 for 29. Nothing pretty. We do have to give the defense some credit here this afternoon. Now the front four for North Carolina getting a lot of help in coverage and have been rushing the passer, Sean Hill, very well. Maryland scheme working very well on defense as well. The toss to the left side is incomplete with Jafar Williams, the intended wide receiver. Those of you just joining us, this is a new and exciting time at Maryland. This program has been below average for 15 years. Sounds like a gross overstatement, but consider, and Maryland hasn't won seven games since back in the mid-80s. They haven't gone to a major bowl game since the 1950s. So there is uh, excitement around the program at Maryland because of Ralph Friedgen, the new head coach, Julius Peppers, 
on the sideline here for this series. Flag thrown as the Terps broke the huddle. Oftentimes that means a substitution infraction. We have a dead ball foul, illegal substitution by the offense. 12 men in formation, five yards and still second down. You can't deceive the offense on purpose, so if you break the huddle with 12, it's an immediate flag. Now, I'm not sure they intentionally try to deceive the Tar Heels there. They lined up with 12 men at the line of scrimmage. That's a good point. You can't deceive the offense, and you can't screw up. Or, or, or use 12 <laughs> offensive players. Now, usually one of those guys will try to come off, but Maryland was going to go with 12. And even if he would have run off, it's still a flag. You can't huddle with 12 and then say, oh, he's a decoy. You're absolutely right. Second and 15. They need to get across midfield. The draw with Mark Riley only gains a yard and a half. There's no fool in the Tar Heels there. David Thornton made the tackle for North Carolina. Third and long coming up. And it's turned into kind of an ugly game offensively, and, and that is an unusual for an ACC opener. You start out with a conference game. Both coaches know how important it is to start 1-0 and and how tough it is to start 0-1 in this conference with some of the other tough teams you have to play up and down the ACC. So the play calling has been a little bit tight. Third and 14, they picked up Julius Peppers on the stunt, and the pass was incomplete for Julian Gary. The great defensive lineman was in his uh, track stance and ready to charge. But instead of going to the outside, they ran a stunt. He came inside. And Maryland picked it up, so there was time, but no receiver open. It's You know a guy's a change-the-game player when as soon as it's third and long, I'm looking for Julius Peppers. I almost don't care where the ball is because he's going to get there most times. They only gave up 286 yards to Oklahoma, and Oklahoma didn't have that poor an offensive showing the entire 2000 season. Sam Aiken back to receive the punt, but it's put in a very tough spot for any return. Brooks Bernard, the punter for Maryland, has been outstanding. He's one of the reasons Carolina's average field position has been their own 21. From College Park, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, long-lasting trucks on the road. Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Discover the power of Pacific Life. Pepsi One, the first one calorie cola that tastes more like a regular Pepsi One. This one's just right. And Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Terrapins nine, Tar Heels seven. Midway through third quarter, Ronald Curry and the North Carolina offense long field to deal with and nowhere to go for Willie Parker. E.J. Henderson, one of those active Maryland linebackers in on the tackle. So David Norrie, we played two and a half quarters and North Carolina has a grand total of four first downs here this afternoon. Yeah, and, and a lot of people probably still wondering, does Darian Durant get a chance? And I don't think so. As long as Ronald Curry doesn't make mistakes, remember in the 13-10 win last year against Maryland, Curry was the deciding factor with his scrambling ability. I think Ronald Curry is going to continue to go at quarterback. I think he gives the Tar Heels the best chance to win. This penalty is exactly what happened to Maryland on the previous drive. Illegal substitution. There's Durant. Foul, illegal substitution, breaking the huddle with 12 players. Offense, five yards, still second down. The difference in this case, there was an injured player for North Carolina who was coming off the field, but he went back to the huddle. There's Durant. He's not been in the huddle today. And Durant looks a little bored there on the sidelines, but uh, <laughs> he really came in. <laughs> off the bench last week and gave this team a big spark led two touchdown drives and as we said at the top had the Tar Heels in position to potentially win that game late after the team trailed 41 to 14. Second and 14 Aaron Thompson forced Curry to move this is where he's really good his tight ends the man down there and the pass is incomplete for Zach Hilton almost unfortunate that the tight end was the one who broke free because when Curry's out of contain you need an athlete at the other end to make a play, not a 6'7", 265 guy. Well, Zach Hilton uses his body really well here to keep himself in between the defender and the football. Makes a perfect play on it, except for one thing. you got to bring that down. He got both hands on it. And Curry, once again, showing his ability to escape the pocket and make plays downfield. Many of those rushing numbers are pass situations. But anyway, you total it. Those are not good numbers. And it's third and 14. 
Good pressure from Maryland. This is intercepted by Tony Akonlawan at the 27 yard line. Enough third and longs that it's going to get you eventually. So pushing and shoving behind the play, Corey Bailey separated from the Maryland bench area. Yeah, this is a misfire. This is an out by Bailey. The ball thrown way behind him. And if you throw an out route behind the receiver, you're looking right at an interception. The first turnover of the game, the first big mistake by Ronald Curry. And you make one or two of those throws, and you're going to see Darian Durant in a hurry. This time, Curry gets the needed time, and the ball just gets away from him. And a 9 to 7 ball game, you can't afford to make that mistake. Mark Riley is the tailback. Matt Murphy, the tight end, is the man in motion. Just one yard. Having called Ryan Sims' name often doesn't mean he's not playing well. Julius Peppers gets all the attention up front, but the 6'4", 290-pound senior from Spartansburg, South Carolina, is very, very good at defense ta defensive tackle. When you have that kind of talent across your front four, especially with Sims and Evans and Peppers, oftentimes you might not get the call after the play, but you free up one of your talented teammates to make plays. And it's been the case for North Carolina this afternoon. Maryland's offense hasn't exactly been moving the sticks either. Toss for Hill is incomplete. That was the 46th play run by Maryland, and they have under 110 yards, 108 yards on the day. Uh, and, and pretty good protection here by the Maryland offensive line, and the difference between Hill and Curry on their last two throws, both out routes. Curry missed behind the receiver. Hill knows if I'm going to miss him, I'm going to miss him towards the sideline and live to fight another day. Another third down for Maryland. From here, it's a 49-yard field goal. They could use some yards. Use a first down as well. That is thrown incomplete for Scooter Monroe. Kind of ran out of room to come down with it. Well, a 47-yard field goal was missed earlier. Let's see what decisions made from 49. And Hill on that post corner route, he's got to get the ball up earlier. If your wide receiver is running out of real estate to the outside, that means you didn't get the pass up quite quick enough. But again, if you're going to make a mistake, make it out of bounds. Well, they'll give Nick Novak a chance for a field goal of 49 yards. Missed from the right hash mark. This one from the center of the field. The red shirt freshman Novak misses to the right. So two missed field goals, long attempts, but missed field goals nonetheless. And North Carolina's defense, which has been very good, continues to keep Freedian's offense at nine. Reminder, this is the first of three on ABC. Our second game, the defending national champs, Oklahoma, taking on Air Force in Colorado, Colorado State. And in prime time, Miami, Penn State, Wisconsin, Oregon. Three very good teams in the top 25 plus Penn State tonight on ABC and a quarterback change has been made Darian Durant comes in for the Tar Heels redshirt freshman 5'11 from Florence South Carolina his first down pass is caught by Corey Bailey right at the sticks looks like a first down for the Tar Heels Tony Jackson made the stop pretty nice ball after sitting on the bench for almost three quarters and that's what Durant brings to the party. He comes into the game, and he's a little bit better gifted as a passer than Ronald Curry. Pretty good runner, too. Not quite the, the same escape ability that Ronald Curry has, but he lit it up on those two or three drives in the second half against Oklahoma last week. A run for Willie Parker. Game's about three or four. Tony Jackson made the tackle for Maryland. Now, you went back and watched the Carolina-Oklahoma game a few times. Everyone wanted to say Curry was terrible and Durant was great. But on closer inspection, Durant's numbers were skewed by some dropped would-be INTs. Yeah, he, he could have had a couple picks in that game. He went 12 for 26. But, but also, you're coming off the bench. Your first game where you're getting quality time on the road against the defending national champion. And, and as we've said a couple times, Durant had him in position to maybe win that game. Durant's pass is caught. Right at the sticks by Sam Aiken. Be very close to first down yardage. 
Here's Ronald Curry, who now is a spectator. And again, this is Ronald Curry, the two sports stud who was more highly anticipated coming to college out of the Virginia area than Michael Vick was. Michael Vick's the number one pick in the NFL draft, and Ronald Curry may be the number two quarterback on his team after the next hour and a half here. Third and less than a yard. Andre Williams, the bigger of the two tailbacks, takes the contact and gets the second, gets the first down at the 45-yard line. Well, uh, Ronald Curry was very honest when talking about Darian Durant and what he means to the Carolina offense. I was happy for Durant. You know, I was happy for the team coming back just to showing that, you know, we can go out there and compete. And I know if I pick my game up, then that would make us even better. And um, that's the way I looked at it. I mean, it was a long game. I mean, I was down on myself, but, you no, know, I was still into the game. I stood up for the rest of the time and watched. Durant's pass is ruled incomplete. Curry talking about the Oklahoma game last Saturday when Durant came in and put up the 12 of 26 and two touchdown passes. But Oklahoma's defense didn't have its uh, full package there. They had kind of relaxed a little bit compared to the pressure they were getting on Curry. just want to step in here a second. That was a sack because the knee of Durant came down before the ball got free. Minus four on the play. This play will be second and 14 from the 49. Durant fakes the handoff and keeps it and gains less than a yard. A stay-at-home play for Aaron Thompson at a Mount St. Joseph's High School in Baltimore. Well, I think it's the same story for Durant as it was for Ronald Curry. If North Carolina is going to be able to move the ball and retake the lead here, I think they've got to throw the ball on some first and second down, some obvious running situations, and give these wide receivers some time to get open down the field. It's very obvious that North Carolina is not going to be able to run the ball consistently and move the ball at the same time. Third down needing to get to the Maryland 34 to keep the drive alive. Durant throws. It's caught. Four yards shy of the first down by Corey Bailey. Well, even though the Tar Heels don't pick up the first down, that's a big-time ball from Durant right there. He dropped back five steps, had to throw the ball all the way across the field on a comeback out, and he got the ball there in good time. And this is a good call to go for it. John Bunning's defense is giving up two and a half yards per play. The defense is getting it done. Why not? The short five, they just need to get to the 34 to keep the drive alive. Showing blitz. Bringing pressure from Henderson up the middle. And the pass is intercepted. Tony Jackson, who had one pick last year, comes away with that one. Which doesn't kill you on fourth down. But the Maryland defense still gets the job done. Well, Jackson made the interception here, but the play was really made by Leon Joe, the weak side linebacker. Great pressure in the backfield, got there early and forced Durant into a bad throwing decision. We'll be right back. But taking a look back at the fourth down play of the interception, watch Leon Joe, number 32, come free on the linebacker blitz. And even though Durant throws an interception on that play, that's a good decision. Fourth down, at least get the ball up in the air. He didn't have a wide receiver come open, but, but give your wide receiver a chance to make a play on fourth down. Ronald Curry still waits and watches. Durant's over there with the offense, looking ahead to the next drive as Bruce Perry pounds forward. Good second effort. Very close to a first down at the Maryland 45. The Terrapins have just been held to eight first downs here in this game. This is one of those football games, a low-scoring game, where you're waiting for something big to happen. It could come offensively or defensively. I think the next team to make the big play may be the team that comes away with the win. Mm -hmm. They're just shy of the first down. Second and one, a little more power football. Perry runs right side. He only gained a yard, but it's enough to get a Terrapin first down. Well, if Maryland can continue to pick up some tough yards on the ground, they'll continue to win the battle of field position. And as the clock ticks down inside two minutes here in the third quarter, field position as well as the next big play is going to really be a factor. That is the first 
first down of the third quarter for Maryland. Confusion for the Terrapins here. Play clock at 10, so time for the senior quarterback from Parsons, Kansas, Sean Hill, to settle it down. Good ball fake. Receiver open. Julian Gary with a first down. Taken to the 36-yard line. That's 18 first down yards. For the senior, who caught 40 balls last year and led Maryland the last couple of years in reception. That's a heck of a play call by Charlie Tapp, the offensive coordinator. Watch the fake in the backfield. Freegian quarterbacks, always great fakers. Perfect ball to the outside, and Gary looked like he was going to step out of bounds. Thought better of it, turned it up. More positive yardage up the field, and once again, Maryland in good position. Trying to capitalize after the North Carolina turnover. Perry. Goes down. Good solid running inside the tackles on this drive for Maryland. The conclusion of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. 31st year of Chevrolet sponsoring such an award. First and 10, Maryland. Best looking drive we've seen in an hour and a half. Little option with Hill. Gains four and a half yards. Much like the drive towards the end of the first half, a little confidence and positive emotion in the body language of the guys in red. Well, the difference here, and John Bunning's got to be concerned about it, Maryland's getting a nice push up front with their offensive line. And if they can effectively run the ball a little bit here, it should additionally open things up for Hill. Hill's been very accurate since his slow start. Started off 0 for 5. Two tight ends left side. They run that way with Perry. But a very good play off the corner from Kevin Knight, a junior. He comes in to make the play that ends a scoreless third quarter. After three, Maryland nine, North Carolina seven. An ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from your ABC station. They haven't had many reasons to cheer Maryland football in the last 15 years. The start of the Ralph Region era finds Maryland leading 9-7. First play, fourth quarter. There's an option toss to Perry. Who will lose one tackle as a first down, and it's first and goal Maryland at the North Carolina 6. Well, the sophomore from Philadelphia who has won the tailback job is cementing it with hard running here in the third and fourth quarter. Hey, he had a great fall camp for Ralph Regan and Charlie Tapp. They say that he gives you a real nice burst of speed, the acceleration, and then he does a nice job in space, meaning he gets into the second or secondary, can make people miss a bit of a home run threat, and this run game is starting going. Perry just gets back to the line of scrimmage, the waiting arms of Ryan Sims. Brings him to the ground. Line up against a Ralph Region offense, most people think passing. When I mean, you talk to the North Carolina defensive coaches this week, Mike, they said we're worried about their ability to run the football, and, and that's what's starting to happen here in the fourth quarter. And watch the tight end down here. Region loves that. Hitch Perry, right side. A good tackle. Brings him down. Julius Peppers comes all the way over from end and makes the play in the run game. Boy, can he run. Mm. I mean, he is tall, athletic, rangy, has a 37-inch vertical leap. Watching him play basketball is really something, rebounding, blocking shots. When but he came back to the Carolina Hoop team last year, they won 15 in a row and went to number one in the polls. Think he's not a difference maker as a sixth man in basketball? Wow. Huge play here, third and goal. The move man is Scooter Monroe. He'll throw to Monroe. Touchdown, Terrapins. the 
extra point try. Maryland will try to go up by nine. And it is converted by Novak. His real name is Hun Warren Monroe. He's known as Scooter, and his second career touchdown gives Maryland a nine-point edge. Scooter Monroe caps off the best drive we've seen today. Ten plays, 65 yards. Sam Aiken back deep to receive. Badad Silkovic kicks it for Maryland. It is returnable from the 13. Aiken backs his way to the 33-yard line. Let's send you to New York, Times Square Stadium, and here's John with an update. Tom O'Brien's team continuing its tradition of good running backs. Green, a very good one last year. Here, North Carolina brings Darian Durant back out. First possession was an interception on fourth down. A first down run for Willie Parker. Gains about nine yards. Second and one coming up. And an injury on defense for Maryland. Tony Jackson is starting strong safety on the field. Jackson, who was the third leading tackler on this team last year, and has had an impact on this game already with a couple of good plays from a strong safety spot. They're looking at his right leg. So as they check on Jackson, we'll step out in College Park. Back at Maryland, Tony Jackson limped off the field, put weight on both legs as he came off. Darian Durant and North Carolina, second and short. Willie Parker's run is going to be just about enough for a first down, despite Durant Roundtree's tackle. And it's just about time North Carolina needs to get the wide receivers involved. They've got a big play group. And coming back into the season, Mike, North Carolina returned just about everybody in the skill positions on offense. The Tar Heels had pretty tough field position in the first half. Here in the second half, they've had some opportunities. They need to start hitting some passes down the football field. John Bunting's team is just short. It's third and less than a yard. Durant keeping. He'll get out to the 45, which should be enough for the first down. They'll move the chains. First down for North Carolina. Let's check the Pacific Life game summary. Now we've gotten to 16-7. It was 9-7 at the half. Change at quarterback made for North Carolina. Ronald Curry threw an interception. Bringing pressure from Henderson. And Durant came in the game, but he threw an interception on fourth down. But for the 65-yard drive where Scooter Monroe caught the touchdown pass. Here's a quick toss to Bosley Allen, who gets across midfield and keeps fighting forward. To the 46 yard line, just a yard short of the first down. You talked it in the first quarter, especially David, about play selection on first down. It's been better here in the second half, don't you think? I think it has been better. Gary Tranquil trying to give Ronald Curry and now Gary and Durant a chance to see the field a little bit better. And a great way to do that is either go with play action or throw on obvious run situations. And North Carolina, you know, it's Durant's just going to have to flat out hit some balls here and keep the drive going. Not much there with Andre Williams. Penetration got it started, and Mike Whaley able to make the play. David, Durant played in the shotgun offense exclusively in high school. As we watch him, it seems like he stays in there another second or so, really half a second, to be sure he's got the snap. He's not comfortable with it. Well, and... and I, I like that. I like staying in an extra half second because in a tight game like this, a turnover could mean the difference. But as he continues to work under center in his college career, I think he'll get used to going under center. And, and they also use a generous helping a shotgun in this offense. They sure do. Third and a yard and a half. Slings it in there. It's deflected in. Looks like it's intercepted. It is by Mike Whaley. Two big plays back to back for the sophomore. A 
three straight possessions, three consecutive interceptions. And two of them have been on Darian Durant. Jerome Cox, number 30, is going to make a great break on this football. He makes a play, and watch Whaley coming back. That's a shoestring catch on the interception. And Maryland up by nine points. Out close to midfield. Brooks on the left side. Comes down, double team block. And that's a pretty shifty running. Perry's the type of guy that if you get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, he can not only make you miss, but he has the speed to take it all the way. And, and that's why he's going to get the majority of the carries, I think, for this Maryland team as the season goes on. 19 carries, 83 yards. Bernie Fiddler, the backup fullback, is the lead blocker as Perry gets into the secondary again. He's submarined at the 22. That's another first down, though. Dexter Reed came up from the free safety spot to spill him. He's not a very big kid. He's only 5'9", 190, but watch him sort his way through the line of scrimmage. The cut back to the right, and he goes airborne to pick up the first down. Maryland up front right now, starting to wear down this North Carolina front seven. 21 carries, 116 yards. Perry out. Senior Mark Riley, the bigger back in the game. He gets a couple of yards as he runs into Quincy Monk's arms, the middle linebacker. Now, up until the last drive, this Maryland offense showed no signs of life. 65 yards on that drive, and here moving the ball very effectively. If they go up 16 points, they could be lights out. Yeah, that, at the very least, they were flatlining in the running game. Hill was hitting some, <laughs> some passes, but now on these last two drives, this offensive line for Maryland is really exerting himself. This is second down and eight. Option Riley. Up to the 15-yard line. Third and three coming up. Well, Mike, we talked about the North Carolina State game last year. Sean Hill comes in, leads his team to a double overtime win. And I looked over that tape a little this week. His ability to run the option was surprisingly efficient. And on that last play, the defensive end showed right away. Nice job of Hill to get the pitch out to his tailback early. Third and three for the first down. Keeps on an option this time. And a first down to the three-yard line. He's not going to beat Ronald Curry or Darian Durant in a 40-yard dash, but he hasn't kept it on the option much at all, and the deception of the option is why it's in the offense. Well, he is deceptive, and, and they ran option with George Godsey down at Georgia Tech last year. Of course, Joe Hamilton ran the option very well, but Sean Hill, as you said, Mike, is deceptive. He runs better than a 4-7, and Ralph Friedgen has always had option football in his package. It gives you the opportunity to run when you don't have as enough blockers to either side. First and goal from the four. It is Riley. You can see the speed difference. He's more the big back at 6'3", 218. Couldn't turn the quarter, but he stays in bounds at the two. Nice play by Dexter Reed, the free safety for North Carolina. Got outside and made a touchdown saving tackle. No reason to dip into the playbook for the tight end when you're just running it down their throat. Perry again. Powers to the goal line. And Quincy Monk's spring and offseason in the weight room helps him make that play. This is one of the advantages you have, though, when, when you do have depth at the tight end position. You can go with three tight ends, and Maryland, pr three pretty good players at that position. I wouldn't be surprised if, if we see some play action here on third and goal. Option keep. Now the pitch to Riley. Maryland touchdown.
Nick Novak on for the extra point. His third of the game. And the Maryland Terrapins in the debut for new head coach Ralph Regan with two good drives, 65 yards, then 54 after Tar Heel turnovers, back-to-back -back touchdowns, plus 16 turtles. Well, the difference here in the second half, and particularly the fourth quarter, the Maryland running game and the option game by Sean Hill. And Sean's made some great decisions, Mike. You know, as you said, he's not the type of quarterback that's going to break the ball 30, 40 yards down the field for a touchdown, but he's capable of picking up a first down with his feet and even more capable of making good decisions and getting the ball back out to his tailbacks with good time. And Mark Riley scored. That was an eight-play drive, 54 yards, zero passes thrown. It's impressive. Short kick by Silkovic. Uh, fair catch, I guess, was called before he caught it. A little, little late, wasn't by it? By Richard Moore. <laughs> hey, remind Mr. Official, I fair caught that. <laughs> ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Jeep, makers of Grand Cherokee, Wrangler, and the all-new Jeep Liberty. Beautiful afternoon in College Park, even nicer for the Maryland faithful. Looking to see their team open with a win. Ralph Fregion's first game as a head coach after 32 years as an assistant. Darian Durant, first down. Need him in a hurry. They're down a couple of scores. Brandon Russell, not much there. Second and six coming. John Saunders in New York. We saw the Mac beat the Big Ten with Toledo over Minnesota on Thursday night. Not the same this Saturday. In Iowa City, Durant runs. It will be third and four. Now, Mike, if you start thinking clock offense here, less than six minutes to go. North Carolina down by 16 points. You need two scores. You need two two-point conversions. I think you got to go no huddle right now. Last two plays, they've huddled. If you want a chance to win this football game, you got to go no huddle, and you got to get the ball out of bounds and down the field in the passing game. They rushed five on third and four, and the first down catch is made by Sam Aiken. At the 38-yard line. Now, some of those plays could be more open than they have been already today because you would imagine the defense is giving themselves a little more room not to let up a quick big play here, right? Now that can work to Darian Durant's advantage, but Durant wants to try to complete balls beyond the stakes. Remember, the clock stops in college football on first down, so use it to your advantage. That's the 38 against the zone defense. Underneath the zone breaks Brandon Russell to the 30. Helmet of the tackler, Randell Jones came off. MC, clock not moving, 5.06. Here's Carolina down at the 30. Nice job. And at, after first down, you get your team right up to the line of scrimmage. Oh, what a nice ball coming back to his right on the run. He looks good, doesn't he? He sure does. Stayed in the pocket underneath Sam Aiken, trying to use some of the receiver's speed. Good job to keep it inbounds by Tony Akonluan. That'll run another 15 extra seconds off, at least, before the next snap. But Durant doing the, doing the right thing. Get up to the line of scrimmage. Don't need to burn a timeout quite yet. Four and a half minutes, an eternity in college football because of the clock stopping on first down. 40 minutes from kickoff in Colorado Springs in Denver. As our triple header continues. Aiken again has a block on the outside. But the ball came out. His forward progress was ruled. Stopped at the 16. I guess his knee had to be down as well. And Darian Durant needs to recognize that. He's looking for the play right now, but get your team back up to the line of scrimmage. The clock will start against one again once they spot it. And Mike, a sophisticated offensive staff, and I know Gary Tranquil is thinking about this right now. They're thinking about a two-point play already. What's our best play? Because if they score here and they don't come up with a two-point play, they're going to be in a two-score ball game, even after a touchdown. Good job by the field judge. He just told the referee that that clock should get more time on it, and the referee will correct it here. 
he'll come over and let everybody know. The field judge immediately saw when the whistle should have blown, stopping play for the first down. Please put 4.17 on the clock. 4 minutes, 17 seconds. Jack Welland is the field judge. Every official has responsibilities, not just on the field, but also as far as the game goes. The field judge watching the time did the right thing there. But it starts moving once the ball's set and ready for play. It's going right now at 4-10. Durant needs a touchdown. Hot throw for Bosley Allen is incomplete. Hot throw, but a good throw. Bosley Allen on a curl route to the inside. And Durant has the capability to put a little bit of mustard on the ball, as does Ronald Curry. And you know, talking about the Curry situation, Mike, this is two games in a row where Durant has come in and really shown well off the bench. And there have been two interceptions on his two drives. One was on fourth down, and one was a good play. His ball was thrown in there to Aiken, who lost the battle. They blitz him here. Here comes the heat. Durant cannot escape. Oh, he did. How did he escape? It still is a sack back at the 22. How on the planet did he get away from those three Maryland players? Well, that's, that is a, a, a youthful type of mistake. Durant has to know, especially needing 16 points, that the one thing you can't do is take a sack. Get rid of the ball, throw it beyond the end line, but don't take a sack because you get two things right there, Mike. You get negative yardage. He was, he was in some duress, but... How does Duran Roundtree miss him? <laughs> We've got third and 15 coming up after this North Carolina timeout. It's actually third and 60. We're both wrong. Let's see his ball. Balls established the 22. Was that North Carolina's timeout? Was that a North Carolina timeout? Yeah, that was the first of their three. Yeah, I was just looking at the board. Oh, okay. They did change it. I'm sorry. I was looking for Ronald Curry on the bench, see if he's hanging around. But, you know, he's hanging around the offensive coordinator, the signal. I don't see him. Joe, you want to see if you see Curry? I got him. 27. Back after the timeout, North Carolina, third and long, needing to get to the Maryland seven for a first down. Gary Durant dumps it underneath. Willie Parker, the tailback, will not gain much. Getting to the 18, it will be fourth and 11 coming up in an obvious go for it situation, needing 16 points to tie the game. North Carolina is going to take. It's second timeout. Yeah, that's a tough decision to burn that second timeout when you're still down 16 points. And I know the game's on the line right here. You got a young quarterback. You want to get to a play that he feels comfortable with. But you know, 338 to go in the game, down a couple scores, a couple two-point conversions. You want to save those timeouts. There is Ronald Curry back behind some of the other North Carolina offensive players. You can only imagine what's going through his head. It has to be really difficult. And as I said earlier, Mike, this week is probably the first time that anybody's ever doubted Ronald Curry's athletic ability or his ability to be the starter. And You're right. He hasn't been the backup ever. You know, as a kid, he was the most talented player. High school, he was all everything in basketball and football. I think, he, you know, he might have been the only player in high school history to be player of the year in basketball and football coming out. 
Fourth down coming up for Darian Durant. Three receivers, Allen, Bailey, and Aiken, are at the top of the screen. They rush five. Durant has time. His throw is incomplete for Aiken. Aiken went up to get it. Rod Littles was with him. But Maryland will take over with 3.32 to go. Well, Durant sure gave Aiken a chance right there. If there's anywhere that Dur Durant could put this ball to give his young receiver a chance, it's right there. And Aiken couldn't quite get up high enough. Let's take a look here. This might have been some early contact. Uh, tough to call P.I. on that. Yeah. That's a pretty good play by the young D.B. on the outside. And I, I still, I really like the way that Durant looks. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets to start next week for John Bunny. First down run with Jason Crawford. Very interesting. True freshman running back. Comes into the game with 3.30 left for his first carry of his college career. And loses a yard. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, the excitement of the Indy Racing Series. Points leader Sam Hornish Jr. and Buddy Lazier head the field. The Delphi Automotive Indy 300 tomorrow for Eastern, one Pacific on ABC. Yeah, that's an interesting substitution by Charlie <laughs> Taff. And especially there were some reports out of fall camp, Mike, that Jason Crawford was having some problems holding on to the football. So I don't, I don't like to tempt fate in a two-score game. <laughs> Good job by Sean Hill. He's running that play clock all the way down to one. And a play-action pass here is incomplete and stops the clock. <laughs> Throwing the football in this situation is, is pretty tough, too, but I'm sure they told Hill, if you put the ball up, you make sure that nobody in a white jersey is near that football. Forty-four thousand and eighty here at Bird Stadium, College Park. Capacity is forty-eight thousand. That's a good crowd. Season ticket sales up not just here, but at almost every school in the ACC. Some football excitement in the league this year. And here is the freshman Crawford, who is very highly touted, and you see why he wrapped up as the contact was coming, got to the thirty, and should be a first down. I, I'm impressed by Crawford. The guts of the coaching staff <laughs> goes unsaid, but Crawford to come in, hey, come play a game speed for the first time in your life at college, 57 minutes into a game, that we're leading, and we just need you to hold on to the ball. True freshman, <laughs> and North Carolina wanted this kid pretty badly. He might be the featured guy when it's all said and done. Pretty good ge game for Perry, though. This is first and 10. Crawford is stood up by Mercida Perry. Why the excitement around Maryland football and Ralph Friedgen getting here? Consider what's happened in the last decade and a half. This is the University of Maryland. This isn't chopped liver in college sports. 60 wins in 15 years. That's four a season. They haven't finished in the top three in the ACC in that stretch. And they've only been to the 90 Independence Bowl. So Ralph Friedgen is trying to turn around what Joe Krivak, Mark Duffner, and Ron Vanderlinden have not been able to do. And in respect to those other three, Ralph is given more tools. There's a better budget for assistant coaches. Facilities are improving. Money for the computer system we showed you earlier for the video. They wanted to hire uh, a, a couple of different guys here. But when Friedgen came in, he not only impressed Debbie Yao, the athletic director, but the players said, hey, if you can hire somebody, get the guy who runs Georgia Tech's offense. We go against that, and they are really good. And uh, they brought a Maryland guy back to College Park after 32 years as an assistant coach. Mike, there are a lot of seasons where if you're out looking for a new coach, there isn't as you know, high a quality coach as a Ralph Friedgen available. And I think Maryland got awfully lucky to bring Friedgen back here to College Park. He's going to make some noise this year in the ACC. This is a big game, too. Crawford runs to the 40. That's a first down, and that is going to be the end of the game. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Julius Peppers, North Carolina, had the three sacks, but was quiet in the second half. Nobody else was very good for Carolina, but to be honest. And Bruce Perry coming back on the field after his running performance today, 116 yards. 
Chevrolet, in recognition of their efforts, will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Pretty good performance by Bernard, the punter, as well. I thought he played a big role in this football game, especially in the first half. He can't give the punter the MVP, though. Uh, but he made, you know, this guy, and I'm not a big fan of kickers and punters, but this guy <laughs> should be you know, one of the top two punters in the country this year. Well, they talked about Fritch Fieber, the Ralph Friedgen era at Maryland, getting off to a good start. And does it ever here this afternoon. He wins his opener. John Bunting is 0-2. Felt better about his team, I think, after the Oklahoma game than after this game. And now they go to Texas with Florida State and North Carolina State. They're going to be lucky to get two wins before October. Final score, Maryland 23, North Carolina 7. A reminder that John Saunders and Terry Bowden are coming up with the Thrifty Car Rental post-game report. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Final score, Terrapins 23, North Carolina 7 with David Norrie, Mike Tirico. We send you to John Saunders and Terry Bowden in New York.